Hello guys and welcome to Program Artist. In this episode I will talk about symbols in TypeScript. A symbol is a primitive data type, just like numbers and strings and objects. And you can use them starting with ECMAScript 6. So as I said, symbols can be used only starting from ECMAScript 6. So let's change the project uh, compilation pro uh, definitions uh, to target uh, ES6. Uh, so once I do it, all of the JavaScript files of the project will change. So all the videos that I made that uh, I looked at the JavaScript files, uh, you need to target ES5 in order for uh, the files to be exactly the same as in previous videos. So after I changed the target of the, comp on the compilation of TypeScript to ECMAScript 6, now I can use symbols. Uh, and let's start by uh, declaring a few symbols. Uh, const symbol1 which will be a symbol and let's create a few more symbols symbol2, symbol3, symbol4 and uh, one thing that you can do with symbols is add a description to a symbol so the symbol constructor can receive a description so it can be either a string or a number but and it can receive none of those so even if I put a number or a string like this I am a symbol I am a symbol if I compare them okay I will log the sim1 equal to sim2 and sim3 equal to sim4 let's just run quokka on the current file uh, I will receive false okay both for the reference type and for the comparison type of uh, comparators of the triple equals and the double equals so one property of symbols which is very useful is that no two symbols are alike. So the description you pass here uh, for a number or a string, it is mostly for uh, documentation reasons. Okay, you, they, the symbols with the same descriptions are not equal. Symbols can define both properties and functions. So let's create a prop symbol, which will be a symbol and create a func symbol which will also be a symbol uh, and we'll have a class some class and inside the constructor I will uh, add the prop symbol to be 1 to 3 and I will have a prop function sorry func symbol which will be a function that return uh, I am a function value okay it returns a string so you can look at this as a function name okay so once I create a sum object which will be a new sum class and I will log the sum object at prop symbol I will get the 1 to 3 and if I log the sum object at uh, func symbol and I will execute it I will get the I am a function value so symbols can be both properties and functions one more thing that you should know is that there are plenty uh, predefined symbols uh, inside the symbol interface okay such as his instance is concat separate spreadable iterator uh, and many more split pieces okay you can look them up uh, online uh, and for instance uh, I can check whether the 
uh, some class at position symbol dot uh, has instance of some object okay and what it does it checks whether the some object is instance of some class it actually uses the instance of so uh, I'm not really sure how it is useful instead of using instance of uh, but uh, for example iterator okay the, the iterator symbol is uh, useful to get the iterator for the default iterator for an object and you probably can override uh, the iterator if you want to return some kind of other iterator of the object uh, for example the default iterator of the object iterates over the keys of the object and you can uh, return some kind of other iterator that iterates on other values uh, and not just the uh, properties of the object itself so why is iterator a useful thing? Uh, okay, so you can argue that uh, this looks very strange. I can use simple names instead of using uh, symbols. Uh, so uh, one very useful thing that uh, symbols uh, enable us to do is uh, overriding, not, well not overriding, adding properties to existing objects without the fear of, uh, of over overriding the, pro the object's uh, properties. For example, in Angular, uh, there are many places where you have uh, some object, okay, and, okay, I, have already, I already have uh, some object, uh, I don't know, Angular thing. So what Angular does is when it gets the Angular thing, it uh, attaches it some properties such as uh, dollar dollar some private angular prop okay and it is equal to i don't know something and uh, sometimes it uh, adds uh, a property with one dollar which means it is a public publicly available uh, thing to use in angular uh, some public angular prop okay and it can also be uh, some object but the problem with this is that angular assumes that no same programmer will uh, use dollar dollar and or dollar for to name their properties but uh, you might argue that this might happen uh, for instance if you're trying to combine two libraries that use the same naming convention so their uh, property names can uh, override each other but if you're using uh, symbols okay you can add a prop symbol and you can use the prop symbol for example or your other symbol that defines something and you're guaranteed to not override any existing property because if it is a symbol you created there is no other symbol exists uh, in the entire world that is like your symbol so if you're getting an object from outside and you're using your own symbol to add properties to it you're guaranteed to never override the properties of the object uh, and uh, one more thing the symbols of an object they are not enumerable so when i log the angular thing the keys of object keys of angular thing okay uh, i will receive uh, i will get both the dollar dollar and the dollar properties but i will not get the symbol uh, of properties uh, that simple i will need to use the object uh, get on property symbols and only then i will receive the symbol this means when I uh, convert the JSON object to uh, a string, the symbols will not serialize. You can do the same thing with properties, but you will, uh, it will not be as simple as writing this line of code. You will need to do some object add property or something like this and specify that it is not enumerable, that it is not mutable and other stuff. 
So when you're using symbols, you get all this behavior uh, without any spells. You have watched an episode about symbols in TypeScript. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more TypeScript videos by clicking over here, or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more code-related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on ProMarks.